Hi folks, this is Dr. Rob Sivis, the Carb Addiction Doc, and the title of this talk today is Inflammation. Poorly understood, terribly misunderstood. But inflammation is the universal killer. Yes, you can get a car wreck, you can get shot, you can commit suicide, you can be murdered. There are other ways to get to die. But the majority of us are going to die as a direct or indirect consequence of inflammation. And inflammation in the human body is governed by two sources. It is governed primarily by chronic excessive carbohydrate consumption and insulin resistance in conjunction with an absence or a significant paucity of saturated fat in our diet. Why, is the, why is that important? Well, let's go down the saturated fat pathway first. Every cell in the human body, whether it's a red cell, a brain cell, any cell in the human body has a double phospholipid membrane around the cell. And then every organelle inside of that cell, be it the nucleus, the Golgi apparatus, every organ, mitochondria, have a double lipid layer within the lipid layer of the cell. Every one of those lipid layers, phospholipids. It's a little phosphate molecule with two strands of fat attached. And the quality of that fat determines health or illness. Saturated fats are very soft and pliable at body temperatures. They have no double bonds. And why is the double bond important? The double bonds are things that break under movement and other conditions in cell walls and release the inflam inflam uh, inflammatory markers, the that cytokines react to. They release the peroxides and the hyperoxide free radicals and the hydrogen peroxides. They release the oxygen free radicals when those molecules break. And what do they do? They create cellular inflammation. They also affect the genes of the cell. So one of the precursors for cancer is when inflammation affects the genes that code for switching on and switching off cell death. And ultimately, cancer, a cancer cell is one that is deformed to the point that it doesn't die. Almost all our cells are programmed to die after a certain number of generations. Well, when you lose that ability and that's genetically promoted, then the cells continue to grow and that's cancer. And inflammation is one of the most powerful and ubiquitous forces that blocks or that alters that gene in our bodies. Now, the gene may be susceptible, like a HER2 new gene or the, uh, the genes that cause breast cancer, but when those genes get switched on or off, those cells, instead of dying at a certain rate and breeding at a certain rate, they continue to grow, they don't die, that's called cancer. And that spreads throughout our body, and those little pockets eventually affect vital organs, and we die. That's cancer, okay? And cancer is primarily a product of inflammation. Colon cancer. I've speculated that colon cancer, we know it's an inflammatory condition. That's been proven over and over and again. Uh, um, a mentor of mine, Steve Gallagher, at, up at the University of Toronto, and the group of guys up there, Youth Team, Mount Sinai Hospital, where I did my PhD, have worked a lot on colon cancer. And there's a whole progression that we now understand. But what's the triggering factor? The triggering factor is inflammation. Inflammation in the colon that may be triggered by the human biome and by fiber by fermentation in the poop, okay? Inflammation. So the wrong type of types of fats, the polyunsaturated fats, when they get inserted into our cell membrane are pro-inflammatory. Where do they come from? They come from our diet when we're eating a bunch of hydrogenated seed oils instead of saturated fat and, and monounsaturated fat. And they also come, those bad fats, come from the conversion of sugar to fat. When sugar gets converted to fat, it produces chains of polyunsaturated fatty acids that are okay to be used as fuel, as energy, but they're not okay to be used in the brain, to be used in the cell membranes for, for, uh, for restoration. So we're getting Alzheimer's disease, which is an inflammatory disease. And we're getting this inflammation from the wrong type of fat in every cell. On top of that, the sugar itself, the insulin resistance, and the sugar itself causes structural changes to our blood vessels. It affects the endothelial cells, they round up, I've got lots of talks on this, and you get a pro-coagulation environment. You get blood clots forming in your blood vessels. 
And that is the diabetic or the diabetogenic cascade. You're getting intravascular clotting, intravascular inflammation. Your um, clotting cascade is being activated. Your immune cells are getting trapped into that. Your platelets are getting activated. Your white cells are getting activated. They're attracting another immune modulator, which is your lipids, particularly LDL, to lay down and try to, try to prevent this inflammatory cascade, this infl inflammatory explosion in your cells. And slowly over time, nicotine and sugar damages those blood vessels. That's intravascular inflammation. And that is most likely going to give you a heart attack, a stroke, or make other diseases like COVID more lethal. Inflammation is the gateway to death for most of us. Now, what can you do to reduce inflammation? Two things. Get rid of carbohydrates from your diet and increase your diet of saturated uh, uh, fatty acids, saturated and monounsaturated fatty acids. And if you do those two things, and protein will always come along for the ride, so you don't really have to worry about protein, but get rid of carbohydrates, increase your saturated fat consumption, and you radically reduce inflammation. The only reason you need a whole bunch of these, oh, this is so anti-inflammatory, this has got uh, anti... Well, you don't need anti-inflammatory products in your diet if you don't have inflammation in your blood vessels and in your body. So you can take all the antioxidants in the whole f***ing wide... Oh, I didn't say that. In the whole damn wide world. You're going to have to edit that out. Um, you can take all the inflammatory products that every wallet biopsy tries to sell you. But if you don't have inflammation in your blood vessels and in your body, you don't need those anti-inflammatories. Your body has a whole anti-inflammatory system built in that starts with your lipids. Your LDL is actually an anti-inflammatory molecule. But keep taking your statin, folks. Inflammation is the commonest cause of the pathway of death of most human beings. And you're, for the most part, in charge of what ramps up inflammation, what kickstarts your inflammatory system and activates your immune system. Dampening those down by not triggering them, by not eating fat, not eating carbohydrates, or, or eating lots of saturated fat, not eating unsaturated fats, polyunsaturated fats. You give yourself the best likelihood of dying by some car with the drivers texting you, running you over while you're going for a run. Live long, live healthy, don't eat carbohydrates, eat lots of saturated fat, be active. Thank you.